Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace and blessings be upon you all and Jummah Mubarak, blessings to you on uh, this blessed Friday of Ramadan. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah in Ahmaduhu and Astainu and Astaghfiruhu. When I would be lahim in Sharuri and Fusina, I mean say Atia Malina. May yad hilahu fella mudilla la, or may you lilhu fella hadila. Or shadula ilaha illa la, wahdahu la, shrikala. Or shadu anna Muhammadan abduhu or a sulu. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, no God except Allah. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon that, O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim Pray that may Allah make easy for me this task and opens my chest and loosens a knot of my tongue that my speech may be understood and these words may be understood and that glory be to Allah alone. Glory be to you alone, Allah, for we have no knowledge except that which you have bestowed upon us. Now, again, as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's a blessing to be with you on this particular day, on this particular Jummah, this particular Friday, uh, which also corresponds with the uh, Christian uh, holiday, the Christian observance of Good Friday. Um, so Good Friday uh, is, is you know, a, a very sacred time within the uh, Christian calendar. And uh, thinking about today, as, as I was putting this, uh, this khutbah together, as I was thinking, reflecting on what to talk about as we as Muslims are looking to go into the next, uh, you know, last final third of uh, Ramadan, looking into these final 10 days, what overlaps, what connections, what things may there be for us as Muslims as we go through this Good Friday, which may just be a holiday for some of us, which may just be someone else's uh, holiday or may just be someone else's observance. But in what way can we continue as we've been fasting, as we've been going through Ramadan, uh, going through what might feel like a number of different Good Fridays up until this time? Uh, what can we glean from this time? So just a little bit about in the context that, you know, Good Friday in and of itself within uh, the Christian tradition, you know, it commemorates the crucifixion of Jesus, of Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, uh, and his death uh, at that time, according to Christian tradition. And, uh, you know, it's observed during this period, this time known as Holy Week, um, and particularly these three days, which are the culmination of this Holy Week, of this season of Lent, uh, in which you have, uh, you know, this Good Friday, and then um, on Sunday, you have Easter Sunday. So, a uh, very, very sacred time, but there's some pervading themes uh, that, that kind of go over uh, Good Friday that also go over these, partic these particular three holy days. Um, and I can only speak from my perspective. I'm not a Christian, and so I, can only, I can't fully appreciate uh, or fully encapsulate uh, what this may mean for uh, over 2 billion people, but to just think about what we might glean from this holiday, what we might glean from this, this observance of sorts, you know, not necessarily just a holiday, and because it is a very solemn occasion. It is something that has uh, a lot of gravity to it, a lot of uh, significance and a lot of seriousness to it um, for many people. And thinking about the themes of Good Friday in and of itself, being themes of suffering, of sacrifice, of love. Uh, one writer had described it as a time for confession, repentance, honesty, and candid self-examination. Um, and another person uh, lifted up that uh, in, in, in this aspect of you know, what this sacrifice of Jesus, of Isa salam, meant within the Christian tradition uh, was the unqualified resolution out of love for, for God to do the will of God. Um, and that it was that love, not just for God, but also for everyone around him, the, the, the sinners that were amongst uh, them, the people like you and me that were there. Um, and that on this day in Christian tradition that, uh, you know, it was through the crucifixion, it was through this death 
that Jesus, you know, in, in Christian theology conquered sin and death. And so, you know, in this, in this aspect is very significant uh, theologically, but thinking about for us, what, what might we glean from this? What might we think about as we hear some of those things of what this time might be for people, for uh, within the Christian tradition, within the theme of Good Friday, of, as we heard, of confession, repentance, honesty, candid self-examination of sacrifice, of love, um, of, of unqualified resolution, of love for God, of uh, doing the will of Allah, of doing the will of God, um, and for loving the people that are around us. And we know that within the Islamic tradition and within the Christian tradition, there's many, many parallels with respect to the figure of Isa alayhi salam. There's few theological differences that are there, but with respect to the character, with respect to the person, with respect to the mission, the works, the words, many of these different things, there's so much that's overlap. And we see in Isa alayhi salam's distinguished life, as with his distinguished mother's life, that sacrifice was much of the name of the game in, in a sense of their walk of life and their walk of faith, uh, persecuted, harassed, you know, marginalized in so many different ways, uh, but yet speaking the truth, not wavering from what was true, not wavering um, from also that which was the will of Allah, um, to accept what was the will of Allah, but also to show utter humanity in the face of that, um, as uh, Allah teaches us in the Quran of you know, Isa alayhi salam and his mother of Maryam that they used to eat, they, they ate food, they were, they were ordinary people in that sense, um, but they, they had a human capacity, but they also had a spiritual capacity that um, is one for us to aspire to. So there's so many of these different themes. And when thinking about us as Muslims fasting right now in this moment, uh, the mindset we might be in, but also looking at, you know, Ramadan is, 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 is the sun is, you know, just about to set metaphorically uh, of the Ramadan sun, just about to set with respect to this last third of the night. If we were to envision the night as a whole of Ramadan and, and the month of Ramadan as a night uh, in and of itself, you know, we're already two thirds into the night. Now we're in that latter part of the night where the sun is just about to come up. The, the moon is setting. Everything is, you know, uh, the day is about to change and we're about to come on a new day. And just as quick as one night may pass in a day, so too has maybe this Ramadan felt that this month has just kind of gone by us. And thinking about in this aspect where we really want to buckle down, we really want to be able to not uh, miss our opportunity, not miss out on this month. How can we be able to make up for what we might have felt was some shortcomings coming into this time, wherever we might have been before today, going forward for the next 10 days or so? How can we get into this mindset? And so we think about what are some of those parallels? What are the parallels? What are the things that arise for us as we fast, not just going into the last 10 days, but fasting in general? And with the themes that we were thinking about or we we're lifting up at the beginning of Good Friday and what it means for us on, on this particular day that we might say, hey, this isn't my observance or sacred day. Um, I have nothing to think about, but we know Friday is a, a sacred day for Muslims in any case. So Jumai is a sacred day. But that added emphasis as well, that when we hear something about Good Friday, that what makes us think about right now, looking into the next 10 days, oh, I actually need to like, you know, buckle up and then and, and start to get my things together and get 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 my bearings straight thinking about that, the themes of Ramadan in, in general, that this is a time of reminder. This is a time of reflection for us that we have this opportunity before we go into the next 10 days to think about what is Ramadan been about? What is Ramadan about? What has it been for us up until this point? Um, and what can it be for us with the, with the last 10 days remaining? And thinking about what it maybe has been for us might be what its themes were, might be what its purpose was, but for many of us in different ways, maybe what, what Ramadan had been is not very much so that maybe it was very social, maybe it was very much, uh, you know, just about the food and what was coming there, but maybe it wasn't about what was its uh, purposeful themes or what its underlying purpose was. That when we think about Ramadan, do we think about God consciousness? Do we think about, as we think about, in a sense, Good Friday and the themes we lifted up, when we think about Ramadan right now, do we think about being aware of Allah, being aware of God's favor upon us that um, in, in the Christian tradition you have that Jesus has you know died for the sins of humanity, the, the sacrifice that's made, um, this favor that was done. Do we think about in the Muslim tradition of our favor, that Allah's favor has upon us of allowing us to fast, of allowing us to be Muslim, of allowing us to be people who uh, call upon the Prophet Sallallahu as the Prophet of Allah, who call upon Allah uh, as the one and only God. 
Um, do we think about generosity with respect to charity, freely giving? Do we think about this as a time of self-deprivation, of abstention, of leaving off those things which uh, may we might you know not have much regard for, we might not have much account for outside of Ramadan, but we 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 leave those things which we feel that we need very much, but we abstain from those things, um, and we we deny ourselves those things that. Uh, that, that we feel are our nourishment and we deprive ourselves in a sense. Do we think about a reminder that Ramadan is a reminder of what the less fortunate experience? Um, not only that, not only reminding what the suffering is and being cognizant of that, but furthermore, being compelled to do something about it. And there's no shortage of it in our world today. There's no shortage of it, you know, just opening up any of your social media apps or just turning on the news and you'll see it, you know, plain and, plain and simple. And especially not just any folks as well. You'll see, especially with Muslims who are trying to fast the month of Ramadan, who are also observing the month of Ramadan, going through this incredible suffering. Do we have anything to glean from that? Do we, in the sense of Ramadan, we know the theme of intensifying our worship intensifying our service to Allah, our worship to Allah, thinking that we are at the precipice of, a, of, a, uh, of, of 10 days in which there may be a, a night that is better than a thousand months. You know, there, there is this night that uh, the, the, the forerunners of this faith, you know, would spend day and night searching for, would pray for, would center themselves for. Do we take any of that into account? You know, do we think about uh, the, the gravity of what would it be like to kind of miss that kind of a moment? thinking about as well the theme of Ramadan being a time of study, a time of reflection, a time of meditation on the Quran, on the words of Allah, that focusing on Allah, focusing on the word of God, and not in just a sense of memorization or just a, you know something to say that, oh, hey, we just did it and now close the binds of the book and put it away. But what, what clarity, what, what, what kind of guidance uh, are we looking for with our hearts that we are in a tradition that purifies our hearts and calls upon us that within the heart's uh, remembrance of Allah, does it find rest? And thinking about not only at this moment, that as we go through this time, that this is a fast that we are doing, these fasts that we are doing at these moments are not just, as we've talked about in the past, fasting of the body or fasting of the stomach, but it's also fasting of the spirit. That our body fasts, we, we've, uh, you know, our physical fast, we've got down pretty well, you know, no food, no water, down to uh, dawn to sundown, um, no consumption, no intimacy during that time. It's easy for us to demarcate uh, what may indicate a successful physical fast. But the spiritual fast is even more challenging. And what is interesting is that the purpose of the physical fast, in a sense, the marker of a successful physical fast is a su successful spiritual fast. It's the real point of the physical one that, you know, fasting in and of itself takes away a physical nourishment, but it, it not only does that, it weakens what is what is called our ego. It weakens that uh, that inner desire of ourselves that uh, may be full of many different things, maybe wanting to do so many different things is just out of control in different ways. And it helps to deprive that essence of its desires, um, of fulfilling just any vain desires or whatnot, uh, which is essential to, to purifying ourselves, is, is not just to uh, lose some calories, not just to lose some weight or feel better on the way scale, but to also engage in an, ear, uh, in an inner reflection. Because as we see in the Quran, Allah tells us that on that day, the only thing that will be accepted will not be, you know, uh, how much we bring materially or how much we have materially or not. It will be a sound and clean heart. And thinking about how when we fast with respect to the physical aspect, we might be cleaning our stomachs, we might be cleaning our diets. But if we are not engaging in those things which clean our hearts, are we doing ourselves any benefit when the time counts? That think about, you know, when we think about how to purify ourselves, how to engage in the spiritual fast, that many components come in. We don't look at those things that Allah has forbidden. We don't uh, partake in the speech or in the conversation that is displeasing to Allah, whether it's lying, slander, backbiting, foul conversation, or lewd conversation, derogatory conversation, or arguing um, without any point or anything like that and losing our cool. Um, and instead, think about what can we do that replaces that. It doesn't mean we have to stop talking, but what can you replace that speech with as a way to be more refined? Um, we have in uh, time and time again within our tradition, emphasis to occupy ourselves with the remembrance of Allah, to say a good word as our Prophet has taught, or to be silent. 
And within our tradition, there is the teaching that there's seven inroads into the heart, seven ways of uh, in the, of the body that go into uh, and and can corrupt or uh, can directly affect the heart. That seven of these inroads that we have the tongue, we have the eyes, we have the hands, we have the feet, we have the stomach, and we have the genitals. And Islam is of the in-between space. Islam does not say you need to be completely monastic because everything around you is uh, is is you know your potential to do so much harm. So just withdraw from the world and don't do anything and just stay there uh, and prevent yourself from doing any harm. No, Islam is a middle way. Islam is uh, the path of the middle that emphasizes that there's an appropriate use. There's an appropriate uh, and designated use for each of these different inroads, that each of these has an appropriate time and place for when they can be used, but guarding these consistently is paramount not just for fasting physically but especially spiritually and also thinking about uh, in a sense that what we are learning during fasting this is not just an exception during fasting this is not just during ramadan it should be a mindset for how we operate each and every day that you know we avoid uh, not just doing these things but thinking about that which we remove we can also replace with something much better that we uh, recognize our hands have the potential to do some harm that leads to our heart. I might steal something and it may cause the physical harm in the physical world. What is it doing to my heart? I might cause oppression with my foot. I might do something uh, with force. It might cause something harm in the world, some, some harm in the world here in the physical sense. What is it doing to my uh, inner state? What is it doing to my heart? So thinking about in a sense that what we can do in a negative sense, we can also do in a positive way. Some of those ways are to guard those things, to guard ourselves from doing a wrong action. Um, but some of those things are also to engage in that which is right, to give with a charitable hand, to speak uh, a word of benefit, to do things that are positive, but also in a sense, uh, being able to uh, hold back on some of those desires. So we think about as we, as we close here, inshallah, that again, there are so many parallels as we think about where we are today right now uh, in line with our uh, brothers and sisters who are uh, maybe in the Christian tradition, uh, who are observing their Holy Week, who are observing their sacred, um, you know, uh, festivals and holidays and, and and observances and worship services today, that uh, we have much in common with respect to the mindset that we might be approaching, not just today, but maybe that we've had for some time, and a point of dialogue and a point of growth for both of our traditions and communities, that when we think about our, our tradition of fasting, just as someone may think about uh, the concept of Jesus or the, 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 the cross and the crucifixion or whatnot um, as this protection, as this shield, as something that has been of a benefit. In our case, fasting is a shield. Our Prophet Sallallahu has taught us that fasting is a shield, that the breath that comes from the mouth of a fasting person is that which is more pleasant to Allah than the scent of musk. We see in the in the in the gospel story in the uh, in in the Christian tradition, you have uh, a very interesting but maybe a loosely connected kind of parallel where you have a Roman centurion um, in order to determine if Jesus is alive, stabs uh, you know pierces on the side and water and blood gush down and you know uh, cures this person of an eye condition that they have. But this healing aspect of you know Jesus being uh, in the Christian tradition, you know. Uh, crucified, put on display, and uh, seemingly to be said that oh, it's that you know, as as in the Quran is said that you know we've killed uh, Jesus, you know we've killed the Messiah, and 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 of these types of uh, you know kind of disparaging things that are said um, as a way of saying that oh, we've humiliated this person was not really who they claim to be or whatnot, but instead you see uh, a tradition in that aspect of the healing aspect of even uh, walking in the in the in the walk of Allah that even your blood your water your blood becomes something that's a of a healing sense but thinking of the parallel when someone is fasting Prophet Sallallahu has taught us that their their breath is more pleasant than the scent of musk to Allah that thinking about when the person is fasting as well that they are breaking their fast when they are uh, that they have enjoy two moments of relief, that two moments of relief are enjoyed by the person who's fasting, that when they break their fast, they're joyful. And then we see that in our own lives that we can't wait to take a bite of that date or drink that water after a long day of just having not any of that. Um, but also later on, when they meet their Lord, they are joyful for their fasting, that I'm glad I did my fasting. And not just, again, for the fact that, um, oh, hey, look at all the stuff or look how I look. I look really good now because I fasted but because what is acceptable to Allah and what will be acceptable to Allah is a sound heart. And is our fasting, what is our fasting doing 
for our hearts. Now, when Allah tells us that fasting is for me, that as Ibn al-Qayyim teaches us that, you know, uh, the Prophet used the image of somebody carrying a pouch of musk concealed from view. And so uh, it was hidden under that person's garment uh, as a musk that was just, just there. But it was it was something that uh, people didn't know about, but it was just smelling really good. And so fasting, likewise, is uh, from away from the eyes of people. It's unperceived by their senses, but it's the one reason why, you know, uh, it's been described in this sense as as something that is exclusively for Allah. That this is fasting is for me. Nobody else would know that you're fasting or whatnot just by your word. But I I know that that you are fasting in there. And so as we close here, inshallah, just think about we're going into the last ten days of Ramadan. We're going into the last ten, uh, the most sacred nights of the year, um, of our of our year, inshallah. And what 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 mindset can we go in? What what kind of a Good Friday mindset can we go in? What kind of a Isa alayhi salam mindset can we go in that how Isa alayhi salam lived his day within the Christian tradition it's very noticeable that there's certain elements that Jesus did this and he did this and he did this and there's many things that are lifted up but in our tradition in Islam how Isa alayhi salam lived during Good Friday was how Isa alayhi salam lived every single day in his life it was no different than how he lived every other day his service his form of working his form of serving Allah, his form of doing different things and that might have been a little bit different in different ways but who he was how he worshiped Allah, how he showed up intentionally and whatnot that stayed at the same every single day and we think about how we fast during ramadan not just during the last 10 days not just during the last 10 nights how we show up in and of itself apart from our physical nourishment should be in a sense, the same, apart from how we maybe be in the zone a little bit, but outside of Ramadan, how we show up in Ramadan shouldn't be any different, maybe apart from that physical nourishment, uh, that we should be operating at a higher spiritual level, that why can't this be the norm? Why can't this be our baseline? It's a prophetic walk for us, and it's a solemn time for us, too. It's a solemn time for our Christian brothers and sisters, and it's a solemn time for us. And though we are, in a sense, as we are reminded of the solemnness, just like uh, our Christian brothers and sisters are reminded that though we are overjoyed to be in this blessed month, this blessed time, you know, on the precipice of these holiest nights of the year, we're also very mindful of those of our brothers and sisters who may not have been able to join us at this point. We are not, we are not uh, forgetful of those who are maybe not able to also enjoy this time of the month as we might be, who might be looking at the next 10 days of Ramadan, not knowing if it might be their last. And so we might be recognizing the comforts that we have, that you know we are recognizing maybe our shortcomings, their suffering, while keeping hope again in Allah's promise, not just for uh, Allah to come and take care of all of it or whatnot, but to Allah enable us to be those who are not just going through Ramadan transformed inwardly, transformed physically, but transformed holistically in a way that can help to change, to improve, and to make a better world, not just for them, not just for us, but also for them. That in the walk of, we take of a Isa alayhi salam mindset, if we take a Good Friday kind of mindset, it was a very selfless type of way of walking before Allah. It's a very selfless way of walking prophetically uh, for the good of humanity, but it was not devoid of walking for Allah. And think about how our walk in Ramadan at this moment going forward from this Good Friday onwards, uh, and especially in cognizance, it's not just for us. It's not just for uh, a selfish purpose. It's for other people. It's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's for making of a better world. What Isa alayhi salam came to do was to make a better world, a better a better place, uh, reminded of Allah, uh, and endured some very difficult things. He and his mother and his family endured very difficult things in doing so, but ultimately was someone who was pleased to Allah, pleasing by Allah. Um, and someone who uh, has left a legacy, someone who's you know transformed hearts, someone who uh, whose legacy continues to live in many ways. And we're blessed to be in a tradition that not only has that legacy, but continues with the legacy of the Prophet um, for whom Isa Islam was a brother. And so we think about how we as Muslims, it's even more obligatory upon us, just as our Prophet some would see the observance of other uh, religious groups fasting or doing other things and reminding his people it's even more incumbent upon you to do something. It's even more incumbent upon you uh, because of the unity of the prophet, the prophetic brotherhood. So thinking about as we are going through this holy season for another tradition, for another time, but we're also paralleled and overlapping with our own, 
in what ways can this be uh, even more sacred for us um, as a time of reminder, as a time of sacrifice, as a time of uh, self-deprivation, selflessness, but as a time for awareness and resolve for Allah and for love for Allah and to doing Allah's will uh, selflessly, uh, but to do it, uh, if not for ourselves, again, remember that there's people that could not have made it to this point. There's people who are not able to make it to this point. There's people who uh, may not make it in the next few days, um, whom we are at least obligated to be aware of uh, and to be conscious of as we go forward. So may Allah make this a time for us that as we go into the last 10 nights, as our Prophet ﷺ had taught us to make a fervent dua of uh, Allahumma tuhibbul afwa fa'fu an Allah, Allah, you are, you know, you, you are, uh, you know, forgiveness is just, is just, in, is, is just, you know, oozing from you. You're, you're, you're the most forgiving. You are the one who just gives all of forgiveness and is the only one who can give forgiveness. Um, so please forgive me. Acknowledging that we are coming from uh, a place of wrongdoing. We are coming from a place of shortcoming. But please put in me forgiveness. Please instill in me forgiveness and forgive uh, anything that I might have done. But also not just from the past, but forgive me for that which might come, but enable me to be someone that can be of a much better uh, purpose and much more enabled to correct the wrongs of the world, to fix the injustices, um, and to be an agent of good as your prophets uh, had come to be an agent of good as prophet had come to be an agent of good may we continue to walk in that prophetic walk in any way shape or form whoever we might be wherever we might be at this time but where we are now going forward uh, is what counts inshallah uh, we ask allah to uh, make this a time of uh, recognition for us a time of solemnness a time of awareness but also a time that uh, is a time of relief a time of comfort a time of ease for our brothers and sisters that are suffering around the world in Sudan and Ethiopia and Palestine and Gaza uh, in you know in, in China and Myanmar and Pakistan and any of these places around the world where people are suffering we ask Allah to not just alleviate all of their suffering to make them a, a source of benefit but also we ask Allah to uh, allow us to be uh, a people that uh, allow us to um, be the alleviators for their harm May Allah enable us to be so. Uh, and again, uh, a blessed Ramadan to you all and to your families and asking you all to uh, be mindful during these last 10 days. But uh, I ask uh, that these 10 days in particular, you keep each of these people and everyone in mind uh, for prayer. Inshallah, we'll see you then. But blessings to the last 10 nights to you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.